Congrats on your purchase of the Wildman Journey 75. This is a remarkably complete and easy to build kit that's a great place to start for beginners or just a great addition to any collection for a great price. The kit's available with either a plastic or fiberglass nose cone today, I'll be showing you the build techniques used for both of them. Being that there's often dust and mold release and other byproducts of manufacturing the fiberglass, you want to make sure the kit is extremely clean before you start building and the easiest way to achieve that is to throw it all in the bathtub. Let that soak for about 15 minutes and then afterwards drain the tub and thoroughly dry everything with a towel. We highly recommend letting it sit for a couple of hours to ensure it's completely dry before you start building. While we're waiting for that to dry, let's go over the materials you're going to need to build this rocket. To keep everything affordable and quick, we're using 5 minute epoxy. However, if this is your first high power build, we might suggest going to 15 minute epoxy just to give yourself a little bit more wiggle room. You're going to need some 120 grit sandpaper and popsicle stick. You can only get one size of them. Make sure to get the bigger ones. Some rubbing alcohol to keep parts clean, as well as a marker or a pencil to mark what you're measuring out. A roll of masking tape is going to come in handy as well. Finally, you'll need a drill and drill bits because we do have to put some holes in some things, and incidentally, that's where we're going to start. Pick whichever of the two centering rings you like best and designate it your forward ring. Mark it and drill a 3 16 hole in it. This hole is going to be used for your eye bolt to attach your shock cord to, and we'll get to that a little bit later. Now take both rings and the motor mount tube and grab your 120 grit sandpaper and very, very thoroughly sand everything that is going to have epoxy attached to it. Varying your sanding direction can ensure you have a proper composite bond. Make this build as strong as it can be so it can last for years and years to come. Once everything is sanded, wipe everything down with a paper towel or towel with rubbing alcohol and let it dry before you start assembling things. Once you're ready to go, mark one half inch and five and one quarter inches from one end of the motor tube. These are going to be where your centering rings get glued. We're only going to be gluing the forward ring for now so we can do internal fillets. A great way to ensure you can easily get the rear ring out is to make sure it's a slightly loose fit on the motor tube and create yourself a masking tape recovery harness, as you can see in the video here. This way, once we need to take the ring out, all we have to do is pull on the piece of tape and we're good to go. After that's all said and done, what we have to do is glue the forward ring in on your 5 and 1 quarter inch mark. Now, you can use a piece of masking tape like you see here to ensure you keep it lined up. Just be positive that you get that tape off before the epoxy starts drying or you are going to have a real bad time trying to sand then scrape that all off the motor tube. Once you're confident the ring's in the right place, grab your shock cord and one of the quick links and tie a cinch knot like you can see here or whatever knot you feel is your favorite. If you want to ensure that it stays nice and tight and won't ever come undone, I like to wrap a little bit of tape around the tail, make it nice and tight, that way it has to struggle real hard if it ever wants to come out. After the glue is dry, we're going to go ahead and take our eye bolt and install it in the hole we put in the forward centering ring and use a wrench to ensure we are tightening that nut down as tight as we can possibly get it. It's not a bad idea to throw some thread locker on here either because you'll never have access to this again once it's in the rocket. Then simply attach your quick link to that eye bolt and again use a wrench to tighten this properly. You will not have access to this anymore once it's in the rocket so you don't ever want it to come undone. Now that that's all tidy and ready to go we're going to stuff the shock cord nice and tight into the motor tube so it's out of our way and we're going to grab the airframe and start sanding the inside of it to ensure that we have a proper bond when we get the motor mount assembly in there. Of course, once you're done sanding, clean everything out with rubbing alcohol and allow it to dry and before you even consider getting epoxy out, test fit this motor tube. With the rear ring on, again, not glued on, just held on, insert the motor mount assembly into the rear of the rocket, being very careful not to block any of the fin slots with your eye bolt. If you glue the motor mount assembly with the eye bolt blocking one of the fins access to the fin slot, you're going to have to make a very embarrassing call to Wildman Rocketry, so we just advise avoiding it at all cost. Once you're positive everything fits, pull the assembly back out, put some epoxy in the airframe for only the forward ring, and slide the motor mount assembly with the rear ring still on to keep everything centered. Before your epoxy dries, test fit the fins in the fin slots and make sure they're reaching the motor tube properly. 
just to make sure one last time. Next we're going to move on to installing the fins and just like everything else with a composite rocket build we're going to make sure everything is very thoroughly and properly sanded before any bonding is done. With the fins you're going to want to sand at least halfway up the fins and make sure you're alternating direction and getting them nice and scuffed up with your 120 grit sandpaper because you will need all of these surfaces to be properly prepped for bonding when you do your fillets. Next, sand the areas around the outside of the slots with 120 grit sandpaper as well in preparation for your external fillets. This is a whole lot easier to do without fins in the rocket. Wipe everything down with rubbing alcohol one more time and once it's dry, start applying a bead of epoxy to one fin at a time and feed it through the fin slot and push it firmly against the motor tube. Be careful not to glue the fin to the rear centering ring because remember it has to come back out. You'll want to make sure the fin is perfectly vertical. You can use masking tape to hold it in place until the epoxy dries to be positive you have it exactly where you want it. Then simply repeat this process two more times ensuring that each fin has had time to fully dry before you move on to the next one. It's a very easy thing to accidentally make one crooked when you get antsy and start throwing other parts at it before the epoxy has had time to dry. Now is where our tape recovery harness for the rear ring is going to come in handy because we're going to slide that off and mix up a healthy amount of epoxy and start doing internal fillets. I tape two small popsicle sticks together to ensure that I have plenty of reach but you want to make sure you get the entire root length of the fin, dropping a bead of epoxy to smoothly transition from the fin material to the motor tube. Again, allow the epoxy to fully dry and repeat this process two more times for each other set of internal fillets and then once this is complete, you're finally going to glue the rear centering ring in, putting epoxy around the inside of the airframe and the motor tube and the back of the fins to ensure that it's completely sealed and everything is one whole unit. Up next is external fillets and the best way to ensure that your tape is properly spaced for your external fillets is to take the tool you'll be making your fillets with, in our case a tongue depressor, and cover it with a marker. Then drag it back and forth rapidly along the line you'll be following for the fillets creating a mark on the fin and airframe for you to follow with the tape. Make sure you put a band of tape around the front just in case you have any epoxy dripping down that way you can easily remove it and once your tape is in place as such in the video, mix up a healthy batch of epoxy, pour it in and in one smooth motion use your fillet making tool from front to back to make a perfect smooth fillet. And just like with the centering ring, you want to remove that tape before the epoxy starts to cure or you're going to have a bad, bad time. And as is a recurring theme, you'll want to let the epoxy dry thoroughly and repeat this process two more times. Boom, just like that, the hard part of the build is done. Next, we're going to move on to our rail button. So we're going to drill a 1 8 inch hole 2 inches from the bottom of the tube and center it as perfectly as we can get it. It's not imperative that it's exactly in the center in this case. However, what is imperative is that your forward rail button hole is perfectly in line with the rear one. To do so, install your rear rail button, snugly tightening it with a screwdriver and use a straight edge to mark 24 inches from the bottom of the airframe, ensuring that it is properly lined up using the rail button as a reference. A great way to ensure that you actually have it lined up is to take the screw out of your upper rail button and set it on the airframe and stare down it and make sure everything is lined up. You'll want it to be as close to perfectly lined up as possible to prevent any binding on a launch rail because if you have it off far enough, one of these rail buttons can easily get ripped off. Once you're confident it is properly aligned, drill a 1 8 inch hole at the 24 inch mark and install your upper rail button. It's a good idea to cut down this screw leaving about an eighth of an inch past the rail button to ensure that the pokey end of it doesn't start eating into your shock cord. Oh, but we're not done drilling just yet, friends. You're going to move up about six more inches and put one more 1 8 inch hole in the airframe above the rail button holes. This is your pressure relief hole and you need it to ensure that the nose cone and safely ejects every single time. For the plastic nose cone kits, all you have to do is use an X-Acto knife to cut out the flashing in the bottom of the nose cone mold, and you'll have to widen it a little bit with the knife to get the quick link through, but it's not a big deal. For kits with a fiberglass nose cone, you'll want to take the provided bulk plate and drill a 3 16 hole in the middle, which is conveniently marked for you. Once that's done, we're going to again use a wrench to as tightly fasten our eye bolt as we possibly can, and once that's in, we're going to glue that bulk plate inside the nose cone coupler. Allow that to thoroughly dry and then do a fillet on either side of it with your epoxy, and once that's completely dried, we're going to glue it in to the nose cone. Ladies and gentlemen, we're on to the final stretch. 
Take the opposing end of your shock cord from the one we tied a quick link to earlier and tie another quick link to it. I use electrical tape on this side just to keep things nice and tidy. About one foot from the end, grab your third and final quick link and tie it into the shock cord like so. This is going to be your attachment point for your parachute and then all you have to do is attach your quick link to your nose cone of choice and then decorate your Journey 75 to your heart's content. And then you're done. Congrats on your Journey 75 build. Now your next journey is to head out to a rocket launch and put a motor in it. Thank you so much for watching this Wildman video. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe so you can keep up with all the exciting Wildman video content coming. And we'll see you next time.